Welcome to the 401k Marketing Podcast. Are you ready to be the go-to expert in the retirement plan community? Listen in as we share ideas, resources, and best practices that you can use to professionalize your firm, demonstrate your authority, and earn more 401k business. I would bet you manage your finances quite differently from the way your parents did. And what about your younger colleagues, maybe even your kids? How do they feel about money? Where do they get advice? Rebecca Auerhan is with me, Patrice Sikora, to talk about change and where there are common threads that link the generations. Rebecca, it's good to talk to you. Hey, Patrice. Excited to dive into this conversation around financial education and um, where folks are really turning to learn about how to manage their money. Which brings (laughs) up the first question. Oh, how have the preferences for financial advice evolved from the baby boomers all the way down to Generation Z? Uh, So right now in our workplace, we have four different and very unique generations. We've actually spent uh, quite a bit of podcast and articles and stuff talking about these generations. So I'm going to cover this briefly. Uh, We have baby boomers. uh, We have Gen Xers, millennials, and Gen Zers. Baby boomers uh, traditionally like to have... uh, when we think of marketing in that kind of traditional air quotes way, that's generally how baby boomers like to receive information. They love a good referral. They love it. So if they have a friend, a colleague, a neighbor they've known for decades, the stronger that bond is with that individual, the stronger the trust. Uh, they like newsletters, something that they can print, write on, read, get great information, in-person meetings, so seminars, and phone calls. They're actually the last generation that'll still accept a cold call. So um, that's kind of baby boomers from a high level. Gen Xers, uh, they are known as the skeptics generation. So they're really you know, hesitant about anything that's overly salesy or pushy, uh, strong sales tactics. It just... Yeah, it's like nails on a chalkboard. They also appreciate a quality referral. However, they are going to do something different than a baby boomer would. Um, They're going to fact check it online. They're going to open Google or their search engine, type in that name. Who are you? What do you do? What's your background? Uh, I want to know more about your qualifications. Uh, This generation absolutely appreciates being informed. They want information. So they like emails, uh, educational checklists, plan sponsor guides, financial wellness guides, and then they also appreciate in-person events. And then millennials, uh, the kind of the continuing huge demographic in our country, uh, expected to represent 45% of the labor market by 2030. They are big into internet research. I don't think this is any surprise to anyone. Their phones are glued to their hands at all points in time. They like digital marketing campaigns and they turn to social media. And then the uh, last generation we'll cover today, which I... Uh, very um I, I like referring to them as our newest uh, 401k participants because that's really what they are gen z uh they're entering the workforce they've entered really the start of the pandemic and now they're starting to see uh as things kind of even out we'll call it that um but they appreciate social media, uh, especially like TikTok. It's like their favorite thing mm-hmm. in the world. Um, and then, uh, internet research as well to fact check if they're going to go farther along. So that's kind of from a high level, each one of the generations and how they prefer to receive content. And well, okay, I admit I'm a baby boomer, but I'm going to go online and I am going to research anybody who tries to send me anything. Okay. And I think a lot of a lot of baby boomers will do that now. So you're talking social, you're talking online, you're talking, you know, TikTok. Is this an advantage? Is it a disadvantage? Why are we going online like this so much? So that is a really good psychology question. You know, why are folks turning with something that's so important, you know, finances, money, retirement plans, 401k, investment information, like what should I invest in? Mm-hmm. So they go online and they do some research and fact finding. And I think a lot of it stems from people are often shy to talk about money. I think that you're word. absolutely right there. Yeah. <laughs> every, every single generation, I don't care who they are talking about money is, oh, I, 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 don't need to do that. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think that's the first barrier is just that word itself. It kind of feels weird in your mouth, like your mouth feel of money. It feels weird, right? You're talking <laughs> about it. You have to whisper. You know, you know, your grandmother, your aunt, your great aunt somewhere is like, we don't talk about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think that's the first barrier. Um, the second is that when you're online, you kind of have a cloak of uh, uh, Ambiguity. Anonymity. I can never say that word. <laughs> Anonymity. Uh, and that's the second thing. So people can research it, you know, at, at any time. It doesn't matter if they're, you know, during the, the day hours or late at night, like what's keeping them up at night. They can grab their phone. They can research information. And the last thing that I think is really important to address, specifically in financial services, is we've been hamstrung, a lot of us, over the years to post content on social media platforms from a compliance standpoint. Um, there's some pretty awesome, huge broker dealers now that are doing pilots with Instagram. Yes. Uh, but you know, TikTok's off the limit, like just off limits, <laughs> just just straight off no. And then a lot of advisors have been using LinkedIn for many years. Uh, LinkedIn is by the way, 21 years old. And oh, really? a lot of advisors uh-huh, hmm. still have issues saying, oh, I can't post on LinkedIn or I can't comment or I, I can only like, but then, you know, is that an endorsement? And I you kind of have to think about the way society has evolved since social media has started. And again, LinkedIn is 21 years old. <laughs> so it's not new. It's not a new platform. No, no. It's hard to believe it's 21 years old. Jeez. Mm-hmm. But but all right. Employee education, you kind of touched on this a little bit. We don't know. We, we don't talk about it. We don't want to talk about it. So we don't know. We don't know about our 401ks. We don't know where we can go with those. Where do we get that education? So thankfully in the 401k industry, there's some really awesome financial wellness providers out there. Um, and I'm going to name drop a couple of them here. So Your Money Line uh, with Pete the Planner. We actually did a podcast with him a couple months ago. Great information there. Enrich is an awesome platform for financial wellness. Financial finesse has been around a long time. Really one of the leaders and pioneers in the business. IntelliSense and what Brad and his team are doing is top notch. Uh, Smart Dollar, Dave Ramsey, like household name, really good, deep information. And the reason I'm bringing up just examples of financial wellness is that if you kind of step back and you think about these professional companies that are putting forth education. Well, the education that they're going to be providing to American workers is not going to be a surprise. It's going to be based on rooted principles, save, budget, invest, balanced Mm -hmm. allocations, time is your friend, time in the market, not timing the market, tax consequences. It's going to be information that all of us in our business, our financial services industry, have really agreed upon. We're like, yes, this is what we're going to market with. And we're confident because history has taught us, people have taught us over time that if you do these things, it works. It's successful. And if you juxtapose that with kind of these rise of the influencers, rise of, and for some reason always comes to my mind is Wall Street bets, you know, on Reddit, those threads where you know, they're like, buy Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, buy Tupperware, <laughs> <laughs> you know, buy AMC. And that in our business and the professional service industry is actually not something that we would have in a professional financial wellness program. We'd say, ah, You know, let's talk about a diverse portfolio. Let's talk about the rest of your asset allocation. If you want to have some fun with like a very specific amount of dollars, yeah, because you've earned it. Uh, it, But for the majority of the information that people are receiving, it's going to follow the principles that our our industry is stood Mm -hmm. up upon. But there are a lot lot more of these, uh, we'll call them unqualified financial advisors out there. And there's yeah. all kinds of information. How do you check them out and say, okay, well, he, he's saying this, but how does he know about this? And, and what are his, well, basically, what are his qualifications? I think that's a wonderful question. 
And I hope that more people start to to squint their eyes a little and say, oh, let's talk about that. I don't know if that's a job for the SEC or FINRA. That's my own personal opinion there. But I do think that when you go on social media, and I follow a lot of these folks just because I'm hyper curious, they'll have stock ticker symbols and say, you should buy this. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, wait a minute. Or in the regulated industry, we can't say any of that because that would be advice. And yet you go online and people are being fed this information on a regular basis. So I don't know, my my kind of spidey sense goes up and I get concerned because if our industry can't get their arms around the messaging, then people are going to be confused. It's going to create mistrust. And that could have long-term effects for the healthiness of financial services in the future. Well, it sounds like there's education needed here. So how can the industry improve education? I think this is a great question. If I were a retirement plan advisor, And I've talked to a lot of advisors about this, and I ask them these questions. How often do you do financial education on site or online or webinars for participants? And I get a a varying of different mixes. I would say that some of the best education I've seen is one-to-one meetings, which I understand is hand-to-hand combat, and that's a lot of work but one-to-one meetings, and then hosting webinars, not at the company level, but at the topic level. So in, so if you have a book of business, you've got you know 40 companies, instead of going around to 40 companies and trying to do one presentation, instead you pick one topic, long-term care, and then you send out an email to your 40 companies and say, hi, I'm hosting a webinar about long-term care, next Tuesday at 10 o'clock, would you like, can you please share this with your employees? And then whoever wants to show up can be a part of that. Mm -hmm. One of our clients gets like 600 people every single time. And it's across all of their companies, their book business. I think that's just a better way of leveraging technology, information, and people get the information that they want as opposed, and they can self-select that this is something I'm interested in. And this is also a great way for uh, financial advisors to to adapt to the digital age. They're not going mm-hmm. to become obsolete. Yeah, adapting to that digital age. And I don't know if it was it's just time or the advent of AI or the, the pandemic, maybe even. But as we continue to sprint faster and faster towards adopting technology in our business. The average person spends over four hours a day staring at their phones. I don't know what they're doing on their phones, um, (laughs) but four hours a day, people are staring at their phones. And the reason I bring that up is if someone's referred to you as a plan advisor, as a wealth advisor, as anyone, as a singer, songwriter, (laughs) it doesn't matter. They're going to look you up. Immediately, because they've been staring at their phones for four hours. And if if it's our phones aren't around us, we all kind of freak out. Well, (laughs) and if they go on a website, and I don't know why, but we see this all the time. At the very bottom of websites, there's like this copyright, and then it has a year. We see the year, the wrong year, all the time. So the year is 2023. But for some reason, on the copyright, we'll see like 2021, 2019. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know why. We we notice it all the time. We're like, that's so weird. We never put a copyright on anything. Or sorry, we never put a copyright year on anything on our website. Um, I think because I'm afraid it's going to get out of date. And you know, I don't want to be responsible for having to remember that. So that's just the first example. Um, the second one is LinkedIn. When people put your name into Google, generally speaking, your LinkedIn profile is going to be one of the top three search results that's going to come up. Um, When people click on that, you want to make sure your LinkedIn profile shines. Number one, do you have a banner image? To this day, we still find a lot of advisors that don't have a banner image, uh, a professional headshot that's within the last three years. We've noticed, and everyone can tell when your headshot's not within the last three years. If we're like, that's fine, I, you know, I look the same. And you're like, <laughs> no, you don't. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> for photos nowadays, portrait mode, if you have that setting on your on your camera, on your iPhones or Androids, they take gorgeous photos. Just the next time you look good in the office, um, go outside, ask someone to snap a new headshot. And then um, when people are on your web page, your website and your web pages, just click around to see if there's any stagnant or abandoned information. We mm. see this a lot with like blog articles. So you'll have a, a blog section and then the last post was like three years ago. It's like, just close, like take that page off the internet, uh, hide it is what it's called, hide the page. And then if you restart your blog, then start it back up again. But I, I think it chips at professional reputation when you go to a site and you notice like there's a copyright that's kind of wonky. And then you go to the resources page, which is the third most clicked page. If you have a blog, it goes your homepage, your about us page, your blog page. And when you have a blog, people actually stay on your website three times longer. And if you don't have a blog, so it's beneficial to have a blog. It also helps with search engine optimization. Uh, but if you have a blog that's just been there for a while or not really doing anything with it, just hide it until it's back on the table. All right. Talking a lot about online and, and being up to date, what about payroll integration? <laughs> um, so this is, we can have a whole podcast on this. Um, <laughs> I should get some friend, industry friends together and we can, actually, that's a great idea. I should definitely Bash ask some like, yeah, like I should grab some industry friends who are from the record keeper side and what's going on there from the payroll side, the advisory side, and maybe even a couple small business owners. Payroll integration in the 401k plan it, it's, I don't understand. It's been, 401k plan has been around since 1974, Arissa. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know how long payroll has been around, but I'm pretty sure people like getting paid. So long time. I think it's a while. It's a, it's a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and for some reason, it's not an industry standard. It, I don't know if it's like the coding program that record keepers use is called Cobalt. COBOL payroll integration is probably on a different record keeping system, uh, but API integration nowadays, the entire tech movement, there's got to be a way, especially if you're a smaller employer, you, you just want to click a button. And everything else in your life, you just click a button. Let everything else, like same day shipping, Amazon, click, you know, I'm going and... But for some reason with payroll taxes, there's still a huge divide and having to manually upload, check your work. If you have different payroll cycles where let's say someone has a bonuses is, is, is a bonus part of compensation and the definition of compensation for your 401k plan, all that stuff should be just basic and in it. And it's not. And I think as we, as our industry evolves and we're talking about PEPs and MEPs and group of plans and state IRAs um, and 401ks, that whoever's going to win is going to have payroll integration right. because business owners, as they continue to you know, start up plans required or not required or required, um, they're going to want to have the easiest, uh, least friction path to make that happen. So you're seeing digital everywhere. Aren't you? Oh, I am. Believe me, I am. But you're the expert here. You tell me <laughs> <laughs> between marketing and payroll and just your presence <laughs> online. It's if you're not on top of it, you're losing. Yeah. I think that's the takeaway. And if you think about today's marketplace, like where are we today and how are you using digital marketing, your website, your web presence to advance your professional career, your understanding, your expertise in the marketplace? And then what are you, how are you thinking ahead? Because the greatest thing with the internet is time. The longer you've been on the internet, the more qualified you look, the more experienced you are, the better search results you get, the more clips come up of you. Um, 
the AI programs are all based on 2001 or past iterations of the internet. So if you have content on the internet from 2021 or before, AI can find you. They can use you. They can source you. They can talk like you. They can. There's a lot. So time, it's like a plant. You know, the more, the longer it's been planted, the bigger it's going to be. The more fruit it's going to bear. That's kind of how the internet is. Uh, when you have quality content, search engines can index it. It's findable. You're findable. Your experiences are um, more prolific on the internet. So take advantage of that. And the more you put into it now, you'll see the. <laughs> magnitude of rewards. And as a business owner, as a 401k advisor, think, you know, what does my business look like in five years and 10 years and beyond? And how am I embracing technology to have efficiencies, practice management skills, digital marketing, so that way I am present across the internet. Rebecca, is there anything we haven't touched on yet that you think we should before we wrap this up? Um, Let's see. I think it's an exciting time to be an advisor. You know, I a lot of folks say that, and I agree. Uh, there's so many like technology things that continue to evolve, and if you pay attention to them, what used to take an office of twenty people now can be done way more efficient mm -hmm. and with a lot less headcount. And so that drives back towards profitability towards the advisor's office, uh, scalability for that advisory firm as well. And I, I feel like the more efficient you can become, the happier you are because then you get more time and you make more in the long more run. More time to grow. Yeah, more time to do fun things um, that you're passionate about, whether it's front of the house or back of the house. Um, so really leveraging technology on your side can add to profitability, growth, and overall happiness. And how can someone reach you, Rebecca, if they want to talk about this some more? Excellent. Uh, please reach out to me directly, Rebecca at 401k-marketing.com. Um, and I'm all over LinkedIn. All right. Follow or subscribe to this podcast. Like it if you are able to. And of course, share with others. And thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for listening to today's 401k marketing podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of our guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of 401k marketing. The content has been available for informational and educational purposes only. We hope you enjoyed.